What's up guys, it's Ace, and today we're going to be going over how I create this trap code nebula galaxy thing. Um, so I use form for this, and I use it in a lot of my videos, so a lot of people ask me how I do it. So I thought I'd go step by step on everything that I do and everything that I learned just by playing around with the program so you guys can do it yourself and um, probably do it better than I do. But yeah, let's go ahead and hop right into it, and I'll show you guys how I do it. Okay, so here we are on our new composition, and I'll show you the settings that they're in, we're in right now. So I'm gonna right click and go to composition settings, and you can see that I'm 1920 by 1080, and my frame rate's in 23.976, or you can just do 24, whatever frame rate you like, you know, do whatever you want. I'm only gonna do a six second long comp, just to show you guys how this is done. So first things first, with trap code, you always gotta create a solid, so let me go ahead and do that with the shortcut control Y, and then you can name this whatever you want. I'm just gonna call this Nebula, We'll call it two because I think the other one's named Nebula. All right, so Nebula two, and then I'm going to go ahead and add uh, form. So I'm just gonna type in form in my search window here for effects, and then you'll see RG trap code form. Go and add that onto the layer, or just double click with that add. There we go. So by default we have this, which is useless. Absolutely nothing is happening. It's just a box. So with this box, we're gonna turn this into our nebula. So first thing I always do is go to base form right here and I unlink our size, the X, Y, and Z to individuals. So now we have a free form control over, you know, the X, X size, Y size, and Z um, depth. So Z is always depth, remember that. So I always keep my, for this method anyway, I usually have the Y about half the size of the X. So whatever your X is, just divide it by two and then put that as your Y. So you can also do this, a quick tip, you can do 500 and then uh, backslash two, not 12, two. There we go, and it'll do the math for you in case you have some number that's like, you know, not easy to divide. So there you go. So I have this rectangular shape here. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and um, close this drop down arrow and go straight down to fluid. So fluid is a feature they added in trap code about, I wanna say two years ago? Yeah, a year to two years ago. So it's a very, very new simulation they added in which allows you to turn the um, motion into fluid. So you can do some really, really interesting things. So you turn it on and right at, right at the start, it does nothing. So like in frame one, you're gonna see no change. You have to scrub across your timeline. You'll see it start to react. And this is the default um, fluid motion they, they put onto your layer. So. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to the beginning here. I'm gonna change the fluid force. We're only gonna use vortex tube for this method, vortex tube. And then um, the next thing is the buoyancy. So buoyancy, if you guys are taking physics or any, any science class that talked about it, buoyancy is just the tendency of an object to float. So we don't want that for this. So zero, buoyancy. And then the random swirl, I'm gonna increase the random swirl to, let's just go to 20 to start off and see how that does us. Uh, random swirl, um, let, me, well, let me turn it off first and you can see what I mean, what it does. So at zero, it, it, we look like this. And if I turn the swirl on to 20, we get this. So it starts to you know really start to look natural. And um, another thing you can do to make it look even more natural is let me close this one go down to um, global fluid controls right here and you can change the simulation fidelity from four from the default to 10. Well, now, my typing is really bad today. So 10. So 10 means that your computer is going to do more calculations to decide how the particles move. So it's going to be a little more render intensive, but you will get a little more realistic results. So um, from here, I'll usually go back to the particle and change the settings there because I don't like uniform anything. Because <laughs> I mean, if you're trying to replicate the real world, nothing is uniform. So you have to change, at least what I do, I always change the size random to 100%. So not every single particle is a different size. Okay. Um, also going to decrease the size a little bit. Uh, I'm going to do 1.5, I think. I'll, I, I usually like mine really small, but I'll just do 1.5 because hopefully that's still showing up on the screen for you guys. Um, so next thing I would do is go to the color and you have to be careful with this one um, really later on when you have like a high number of particles, but um, I always do the color either really early or I do a little trick to make sure it works correctly. But anyway, let's go ahead and do it now. So we, I would change the set color um, option to radial rather than solid color because radial allows you to adjust the colors over the, uh, let's go back to the beginning because you'll see this. And that's pretty self-explanatory right there. So the center will be one color 
Um, you can see it by opening this drop-down arrow and make this a little bigger so I get more landscape here. Um, so you got the center, red. Next layer is yellow, green, light blue, blue. So it goes um, left, to left to right is center to outer. And um, so from here, I'm going to change my colors to the colors that I usually like. I usually like my center to be white. Um, and obviously do whatever colors you want, but um, this is just what I typically start out with and adjust over time as I work. Um, purple there, and then maybe like a pink. I use a lot of colors, a lot of colors. And I'll show you a couple uh, tips too to make sure um, you are navigating this correctly because I used to do this. I used to click on this on accident and add all these swatches, these little boxes that have the color in them are called swatches. Um, and you can't control Z, uh, uh, can you? Yeah, you can. Okay, you can control Z to get rid of them. But I used to have a bunch of them on there on accident. So <laughs> I didn't know how to get rid of them. I just kept adding more. What you can do is to click on one of these swatches and can drag down. So click and drag down, you can delete it like that. So if you have too many. All right, so next is actually that blue one's probably fine. I like blue then maybe a red. I just like these random colors. And then I have one more. I add a green about there and then I'm just going to change this blue to a lighter blue yeah that'll work uh, looks okay so let me go ahead and zoom out here and drag along see how this looks so far it looks okay maybe a little too much green I'm just going to adjust these then I'm not going to spend too much time in this part because it's kind of all preference I'm just going to throw another purple in here just for the heck of it all right let's move on okay so from here I would I was usually start to increase my particle count from here because now that the color is set, um, you shouldn't shouldn't get too many crashes because if you had the particle count, um, sorry, it's in yeah base form. In the base form, you have the particles in X, Y, and Z, so you can adjust um, how many particles will show up in each dimension. So as you start to increase this, if you have a lot on the screen and you, then you try to change the color. It will, t it will probably crash your After Effects, so um, be very wary of that. Um, one more thing I'm going to add, which is another thing that's kind of personal, not personal, but you know what I mean, it's um, preference. So you can change the, um, where is it at, Fluid Master, go to the Tilt and Rotate. So um, let me go to a point where it's easy to see here, maybe right there. So I usually adjust the Tilt first. So I turn it sideways a little bit you can kind of see well maybe if I go to the very beginning you can see a lot easier so tilt no you can't sorry let me go back to here okay tilt up either direction really so it's tilted and then rotate it come on I want to do this in real time so you can see what's happening but it's a little hard because I'm recording and editing at the same time there's a lot of CPU being used um, I'm just going to go to my other one and copy the settings, so I'll be right back. Let's just grab that. Uh, global Fluid, nope. So Fluid Master, this is the base one. So negative 38 degrees tilt, 60 degrees um, rotate, so let's do that. Negative 38, let's just do 60. There we go. So that is the same angle that I used in mine. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is change the blending mode of the particle. So I'm going to go down to particle right here and change the blending mode to screen. You can use add if you want to, but sometimes add will look a little overly bright. So I'm just gonna use screen for now. Um, and then I'm also gonna change the um, the swirl. I think the swirl's a little too high. It's swirling a little too much. So I'm gonna actually divide that by two. So to 10 rather than 20. It's going to be a little more uniform. Yeah, there we go. That's closer to what we're looking for. And I'm also going to decrease the core size a little bit. I'm going to go down to like 30% rather than 50. There we go. So the core size is the actual you know, center point, what it sounds like, basically. So let me go back there. So now we have this. Looks OK. I think the colors are just all right, but um, you guys will get the point of this. And then um, so last last parts of this would be the actual um, kind of additional things I would add in like the depth of field and the uh, glow so I'll show you guys how to do that real quick so you go and add a new layer with control alt y or you can right click and um, go to new 
adjustment layer, whichever way you want to do it. And I'm just going to name this D O F for depth of field. I'm going to add depth of field right there. And that's not going to do anything until we give it a layer to create the field off of. So we have to create a new solid with control Y. I'm just going to call this depth map two because this is the second one I've done for this tutorial. So, and then, um, so next with this layer, you have to add a gradient ramp onto it. Gradient ramp. And let me go ahead and pre-comp it. Okay. Turn the visuals off. Uh, and also, if you have to make sure, let me control Z that, make sure you guys do that correctly. So control shift C to pre-comp and make sure these are checked. Um, move all attributes and, well, this doesn't have to be checked, but I always do. So this is the important part, move all attributes into the composition, so, okay. And then you can turn the visuals off because it doesn't matter. Um, then go to your depth of field adjustment layer and change the depth layer to the composition we just created. So there we go. And then now take this select depth crosshairs Click that and select the center of your composition or wherever you want the focus to be. So um, select that and then increase the radius and you'll see it start to blur. Let me zoom in a little bit. You'll see it start to blur the edges and not the center. It's a really, really cool effect. And then last thing I would do is add FL Glow. And I'm actually going to put this above our um, depth of field layer. Okay, go back to, to size, and then I'm going to um, increase the radius a ton. I usually like my radius is like really, really wide, and then increase the amount some, so it's like gives it a more natural glow in my opinion. And there we go. So next, I'm gonna just preview it and see what we have going on, and see what else we need to change. As you can see, this takes a while to render, so I wouldn't recommend this for someone with low PC specs. Like, uh, you're gonna have a headache <laughs> with crashes and just taking it, it taking forever. So, so here it is in real time. Uh, last thing I'm gonna show you is how to time remap it, because one, we don't want this, because who wants that on the screen? That looks terrible. So I'm just going to pre-comp our nebula. Control Shift C to pre-comp. I'm just gonna leave the name like that. It's fine, and then. Once you um, have done, done that, just click, um, and then I'm going to add time remap by pressing Control Alt T, and that'll add time remap. Or you can right click and go to time, time remap. And then from here, I'm going to change this first keyframe. So this one right here, I'm going to increase the value, and I'm not just going to click and drag because that's you might lose a lot of, you know, you don't want to start here. So what I do is I control click because control will un unironically will give you more control over the drag it'll make it happen slower so you have more fine adjustments that you can make so i'm just going to start there that should be fine and then i'm going to select these keyframes and another quick tip you can obviously you can click select keyframes like this or you can just click the effect itself and it'll select both keyframes for you and then press f9 to um easy ease the keyframes and then make sure you have the effect selected and go to the graph editor and the graph edit that I always do is I always start off with I just grab this line here and this hold shift and pull all the way to the left every single time that's what I do so let's go ahead and preview that and see what it does all right and there we have it so that pretty much does it for this tutorial I know we're a little fast in some parts you can go ahead and um, pause and Take your time with it, and I'm sure you guys will be able to create things much better than I can. So um, have fun with it, and leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you really enjoyed, and I'll try to do more of these. And for those of you that are interested in downloading this actual project file so you can see all the settings and adjust them in real time, I'll put the link down below for those of you that are interested. And thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.